Hi, I'm Amal. And I'm Kerry. Thank you for joining us for a special presentation of Bonnie News Network. Since the COVID-19 outbreak, Fompon and schools all over the country have had to switch to remote learning for the time being. Rather than focusing on the hardship that we have all faced, we wanted to share stories about what teachers have done to try and keep classes engaging, and what students have done to stay positive. What have you been doing to help FHA families stay positive? Well, I think for the students, um, you know, the fact that we have been trying to post, we've been trying to post daily um, words of encouragement in the in the Google Classroom. Um, the fact that, you know, SAC has taken it upon themselves to um, try to do some kind of theme weeks, which is also great. Um, I think from the administrative perspective, we feel um, our hearts really go out to the senior class, especially at this time. And we've been really trying to work very hard to um, put plans in place for that celebration. So hopefully we'll, we'll be seeing those celebrations beginning um, the last week of classes, which is in a couple of weeks in May. And then for faculty, um, you know, we've been getting so many great compliments from parents about what a great job everyone's been doing with remote learning. So the administration has been trying to share those compliments with the faculty as much as possible. And I think just keeping to our regular schedule uh, with meetings and having like a really set um, school day following the schedule has, has helped keep a lot of people focused and optimistic that um, a lot of work is getting done and um, hopefully we'll be back on campus very soon. And certainly with parents, we've been trying to do weekly communications with them as well, just to keep keep the momentum going, keep everybody positive and working hard and you know, hoping we get back to campus really soon. Do you ever feel like pressure because you're the principal, so you have to do all of this? I do. Um, <clears throat> I think in this situation, what's been the hardest thing is just um, kind of not knowing what's coming every day because the situation has been evolving so quickly. So I've I felt nothing but support from the faculty and the students and the parents. I think it's just the unknown of what tomorrow is going to bring and what um, decision we're going to have to make. I think that for me personally has been the hardest part of this. So how exactly have you been keeping yourself optimistic? Because you've been doing it for everybody else. How are you doing it for yourself? Um, focusing a lot on the students. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting to have office hours after school. And seeing them has made me very, very um, excited and happy. I miss everybody very much. So I think for me, it's just keeping those personal connections, even um, having meetings with the chair people, having meetings with Miss W., we meet every day. I think that just keeping that personal connection to everybody that um, in the community, that's really, that's really helped me stay positive through this whole thing. As the school's president, what have you done to make FHA a better place? Well, I think FHA to begin with was already, you know, amazing. It was home for many people. Um, but I think this year in particular, especially with all the challenges we're facing now, um, Bringing people closer together as a family is something that I really wanted to key in on this year. Um, we're all sisters and we're all here for each other. Um, the seniors, for all the underclassmen and everything like that. Um, we want to make sure that we're here for each other. And I think as the president, I had a platform that allowed me to help move that process along. So um, I hope I did a good job. And I know that I have a lot of sisters at Farmbon and a whole family there. Many students have decided to create works of art during this pandemic. How has working on art like made you feel over this pandemic? Like, does it help distract you from being bored? Definitely. So art is my favorite thing to do during quarantine because it can be really stressful when you're just in the house thinking about how you could be anywhere else but stuck in the house. So making artwork it's something that is like I spend a lot of time doing it it's very relaxing and also it's just like a great feeling when you're actually doing something productive and also I recommend it to everyone because you could just like cover your walls with it and make your room look really cute so I definitely it's my favorite thing to do while being quarantined so far I actually like your wall a lot so I mean Thank you.
Even without sports night, what has made you want to like complete the mural? So for me, and I feel like for all the girls in our year, like I feel like the mural is something that's really important to us because we were really hoping on winning this year and redeeming ourselves because we got second place last year. So I really wanted to finish it because I feel like even though we couldn't have sports night, it will make everyone feel better and feel really happy to see the finished product. And also for me, like I don't want to just give up on it because I was really looking forward to doing it. So that's why I wanted to keep working on it. And just for everyone, just so we could see it and like still be like proud of ourselves in our year, even though we didn't get to have a chance to do sports night. And just... One more question just out of the blue. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have to keep this in. Like, I'm going to cut myself out. Like, we're cutting yeah. me out. Like, you're going to be the only one in it. Um, Like, how do you feel knowing that, like, senior year is over and you're stuck at home? Like, how do you feel about that? It's definitely really hard because for me and I feel like for most of us, we were so looking forward to the end of the year. Like, not just to leave, but just because there's so many things that we had to look forward to. Like, we had our graduation, we had our prom, like, senior day, like, where the day where we were our college shirts, like, the tie-dye shirts. So much stuff that you would see all the other seniors doing, and then it's just so sad that we might not have a chance to do that. But most of all, I just really miss my friends. I'm really sad that we didn't get a chance to say goodbye and it really breaks my heart, but I'm staying hopeful. I'm trying to stay positive, and I really hope that we'll be able to work something out and that we'll be able to see each other before we go away for college, so. Mm -hmm. So, Anna Maria. Yes, Kristen. What have you been doing in quarantine to keep yourself entertained? Well, I've been doing a lot of different types of art. I painted my door, as you can see right there. And that was fun. Um, and then I also tried this thing called FX makeup. It's like used in movies a lot. It's like fake blood and like uh, modeling clay and stuff like that. So I tried that for the first time and I had a lot of fun with it. So what are some ways you've kept in contact with your friends and classmates? Uh, Google Meets all the time. Like 24 seven, I'm on a Google Meet with Belisa. Um, and then we set up that Instagram page to like go through all the senior, uh, senior like college decisions. So that's been, oh, yeah, I forgot yeah. I did that. yeah. And that, that takes a lot of time, but it's like, it's a like fun keeping busy type thing. Oh, can you talk about that more? I forgot you were the one who did that. That's good. Yeah. So Elise and I have been like accepting, um, like direct messages from everyone, like saying where they're going, what they're majoring in. It started because we were just nosy and wanted to know where people were going. But now it's like, now it's cute. It's like we're trying to make people happy because every once in a while you get like an update on where people are going. Um, oh, so yeah, it was just a really cute idea. And Elise is really artsy. So we put together a cute collage. That's lit. Um, everybody? Yeah, that's literally the only question. Cool. Are there any other ways you've kept busy during quarantine? Um, I've been going on walks, and when it's nice out, I go paddle boarding on my lake. What have you been doing to keep your spirits high during lockdown? Um, so since I'm mad at Fompon, I decided to start scrapbooking, like, all the good memories I had at Fompon. So I started it from freshman year, and I'm currently working on senior year right now. Um, that's, like, the hardest one because, like, it's all so recent, but I love doing it because I just relive all those amazing memories I had at Fompon and it makes me feel like I'm back there so it just makes me happy <laughs> what's it like being home um it's sad because like I know I could be spending all the time I have now throughout the day like at Fompon but I mean I have like like do through the google meets like it's making me happy like I get to see everyone like from school and I see all my teachers and like by having the google meet it makes me feel like I'm actually in class even though I'm sitting in my bed but I mean it makes me happy too so it works <laughs> How are you keeping yourself entertained? Um, I've been watching a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows, um, mostly like funny ones. Like I usually love sad movies, but like I can't make myself more sad. So I just watch a lot of funny movies and funny shows. Why did you send out the email about the mental health 
like mental health email that you sent out to the girls? Oh, um, so for science research, I do research on like mental health on high school students. And since I'm very interested on the topic, I've been doing research recently on like mental health and how people are coping with Corona. And I was looking at a lot of news reports and supposedly depression, anxiety, and stress levels are raising, like increasing by a lot. So I thought a lot of people, they don't worry that much about mental health. Like they worry about their physical health because it's more clear to see the symptoms and see how it's affecting you. But I feel like if, your mental health isn't good, then your whole body can collapse because your brain is like the center for everything. And no one was really addressing the issue because everyone's caught up in their own things. So I was like, I want to make a first step. I want to just leave this out here because you don't know what anyone's going through at home or because school is closed. So I just didn't, like, I just thought to myself, better safe than sorry. I'm going to leave the information here for whoever needs it. And then the next question is, what was the general response to your email? Um, a lot of teachers emailed me back and guidance emailed me back. They said, thank you for stepping up, for being a leader and for sending out this email. <clears throat> Some teachers also emailed me like, is everything OK? Why did you send out this email? And I said, yeah, everything's fine. I just want to make sure that everyone in Fon Fon is doing OK, that everyone's good, because I don't want to assume that, oh, everyone's fine. Everyone's in a good household. Everyone is happy because you don't know what anyone's going through. And I just wanted to be safe, you know? Some of the faculty members at Fonbon have also been using the Fab Lab to help medical workers sorely needed PPE. How have you tried to keep students engaged in your lessons? Well, I've tried to move towards project-based learning predominantly in my classes. So a lot more projects move away from traditional testing, which I found hasn't really worked. And um, engaging with the students, having class discussions, talking with students, all of these things have been much more benefic beneficial during this time. OK, and what inspired you to use the Fab Lab to create face shields for healthcare workers? Well, I really wanted to do something as an educator. When I first heard about the crisis all over New York City, um, I kept racking my brains, what can I do as an educator to help the situation? And um, I was listening to a show, actually, a TV show from Rachel Maddow, Maddow's show, where she requested, if anybody has a 3D printer, could you print something. So I started looking into different prototypes uh, together with Mr. Williams as to what we could possibly print. And we were not really coming up with too much in terms of 3D printing and what could be done. And then um, two weeks later, NYU uh, had an open source um, file online where they showed you how to, how to laser cut a face shield. And I said, wow, this is something we could do. So as soon as we saw that, uh, Miss Rivera came into school and she modified those files and she worked with them and adjusted them so they fit our laser cutter. And then we were able to start production. So we um, tried to order the supplies that they required and we weren't able to get them because they had been all sold out. So even something like elastic was totally unavailable. We tried going to different Walmarts and craft stores and whatever was still open online. And you know we tried online sources as well and everything was sold out. out. Nowhere could we even find elastic. So we said, let's improvise. So we called Mr. Tetsky and we said, you know, what do we have in the school office that we could use? And she came up with some ideas that she had. She brought us some book, uh, book report covers that she had in the main office. And we had some sheet protectors that we found in various drawers and that, you know, in the school labs, we kept looking through to find where, what can we find. And we experimented with these. And then we had some large rubber bands that we had in the physics cabinet. So we used all of these things and we said, let's see if we can make one and if it will work. And it actually did. And we said, wow, this works perfectly. We tried it on. We sent, we sent the pictures and the dimensions, et cetera, to a doctor. And we asked, well, what do you think? You know, would this be medically acceptable? And she gave us the green light signal. She said, yes, it looks perfect. Go right ahead. 
So then we continued and we continued production and we, you know, started making them immediately. And we found we were able to reorder those supplies because, you know, book covers were not being bought up or, uh, you know, rubber bands were not being bought up. So we quickly ordered, you know, enough um, supplies. And we've made over a thousand face shields so far. And we've supplied 13 different local hospitals who are all really, really grateful. In fact, they say that our shields are more friendly on the face than the rigid shields that they were using because they have to be in them all day. So it's easier on the face to have a lighter shield. So actually, we didn't know it at the time, but our book book covers work pretty well. Our book covers, so it's been working. Our PE teachers have been finding ways to keep classes active and fun as well. How have you been trying to make sure students are active while we are sheltered in place? Well, I've been trying to do different things with the girls. I had um, sophomores doing a basketball shootout with socks into a garbage pail from different positions and a trick shot. I've had all the whole school doing the twist, the, all my students doing twists, videotaping themselves and sending it to me because I thought that would be fun. And now I've been doing all kinds of workouts. I was doing some upper body workouts and now I, I just finished today doing my leg workouts and next week I'm going to start doing chair workouts. Is this going to be videotaped? So that's thing we'll be doing things like this, you know? <laughs> I really miss being in school. I, I promised that I would never complain about traffic again, probably until the second time I was late for school um, because of traffic. But it's uh, even though I'm seeing my classes face to face because I meet every single class, it's not the same as being in class with everybody. I find that um, it's it's it's. I just miss everybody. I just miss everybody. I miss being in school. I miss the the routine. I mean, I get up the same time every day and I do the same thing that way, but it's not the same as being able to give my students a high five as they leave the gym, you know? Yeah. What motivated you to make your own personal moment of frustration video? Um, so what, ha what happened was, as you guys know from me posting, um, I definitely have some internet struggles. The internet is uh, is weak here. Um, and so I've been having issues with uploading to YouTube. And I kind of figured out my way around that, like trying to upload overnight and stuff like that. But then the other morning, I woke up early and I was like, all right, I'm going to get this video out of the way for them, like, you know, and get it uploaded. And I literally woke up at like 530 and which is like, I don't mind waking up early, but I woke up early specifically to this video, recorded it. It was only 15 or f maybe 17 minutes long. I was like, great, this is going to upload so fast. Mm -hmm. And it literally took about an hour and a half to get that video or the clips of the video off my phone and into iMovie and iMovie would not stop glitching and I couldn't figure it out. And I was getting so frustrated. And then I was getting upset because I was like, you know, not like I wasn't like crying upset. I was just like enraged upset where I was just like, I was like, I specifically woke up to do this and I want the kids to have this lesson. And I was getting like all like crazed from that. And, um, and I just took a moment to like check myself and be like, well, like, honestly, what would I do? like? Let's just say that a student was having this problem. You know, what would I say? And, and right away, I heard myself being like, well, you got to push through that problem. Like you have like, you have to figure out another way to work through it because what you're doing right now is not working. Um, and so I made a cup of coffee because we always need, <laughs> we always need that. Made a cup of coffee, um, went and Googled, figured out what the issue was. Um, part of it was that the app needed to update. The other part of it was that I had to move like where it was being stored, um, and and it ended up working out it did end up uploading on time i was so happy um but i think i, I feel like i recorded that video i think i say it in the video i'm like it's 7 30 a.m i'm like exhausted um so it, it literally i recorded that right after it because i was like you know what if i was in class 
I would have made like a little like a little sticky note for myself and like shared that with each section of algebra right. two and been like, look, you, you know, this is if anything, this is the connection between working through problems um, in math, which is like a very safe environment, right? Like what's the biggest risk? You know, you have to erase something if it's wrong. Mm. Like there's no risk, but you're still challenged. And it was the same idea where this was a challenge. I didn't know what the answer was. It was frustrating. Um, and instead it was a good moment to just check myself and be like, no, you can get it. You can figure it out. So I think, and, and then the whole thing connected to quarantine for me was like, well, what's, you know, I guess what's the value of keep doing math class in quarantine and also just like sharing our frustrations um, is important. You know, it's, it's how it's important to say like, I am frustrated and that's okay. And I'm going to move through it. And that's like all of quarantine. Teaching is all about your human relationship with your students, right? It's, it's that you see that I am totally not perfect. Like I got really frustrated there. You guys got get frustrated with any number of things. Like we, we all do. Um, and so part of it is just like sharing that moment together uh, or different moments. And the other thing is that um, when we share that we're frustrated by these things and like when we express that like, you know what, I, I was frustrated and that's okay. Or or I had a really tough time getting through today. I had a tough time waking up today. All of those things are things that are okay because this is not normal. Like this is just <laughs> not a normal situation. And like, we have to make sure that we um, are encouraging you guys and, and us and all, and teachers, like our whole Fon Fon community, we're encouraging each other to be productive, but we're also, and like get through the day. Um, but we also have to be like, you know what? This, you did this on your checklist today, and if that is what you could do, that's awesome. And then if you could do more on another day, that's awesome too. They're both great. Both things moved you forward. So I think that that was just the main point I wanted to share with everybody with that video. Like, we're frustrated. That's okay. So what have you done to make your workspace fun for classes? Uh, one of the things I've done is I every day have a different TA with me to sort of help us out. And so since we started on March 16th, right? I wanna say that's when we started virtual learning. Uh, I've had a different TA with me every day. Um, sometimes it's more maybe cartoon related, uh, sometimes more like my hobbies like wrestling. Uh, I've actually been pretty good. I've had quite a few different ones. I actually do keep track and take photos of them every day. Um, sometimes I've had a student actually ask me like, oh, who was it or something like that? Or so, like say if my, they drop a certain day, they'll ask who was it yesterday? Um, but I've kept it up and I've been pretty good about it. I can share some of those photos with you if you wish too. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, that's probably. Okay. Um, how has been, sorry, how has been being senior year coordinator been for, no? Oh, wow, that is a question. Uh, very challenging. Um, me and Miss Sosa probably meet, I would say almost every day, maybe every other day, uh, just about um, troubleshooting different ideas. Now that a lot of these senior events and activities had to get um, sort of switched around, moved around, uh, rescheduled, reinvented um, because of our distance learning, there's been you know tons of meetings. Um, also, we've been working with one another, myself and Ms. Sosa, uh, also Ms. S, Ms. W. Uh, we've all been working really hard to make sure the seniors still have a memorable um, end to their time at Fompon. And so there's been a lot of sort of planning with that. And so it's been training, but we hope that it all turns out very worthwhile with some of the great ideas that we've come up with. Uh, yeah, those are the only questions. Oh, cool. Thank you. oh I did have one more thing for the first one. Uh, you're asking like, how have you made the class space better? I forget exactly what I said, or what have you done? Uh, I still do my good morning and good afternoon chants every day on class. So even though we are not in the physical classroom, I still do it and still get some students to still respond to me. So. Yeah, those, those are nice. Yeah. Those so are sort of constant. To keep the atmosphere, to keep the el morale, Hi, that's not actual Spanish. Um, 
we're trying to organize a car parade so that the seniors can parade in, in cars, you know, a, down a route and then around the school. So we're trying to do things like that where they really feel acknowledged um, for their achievement, even though it's we're not necessarily in the school itself. We hope you enjoyed this segment during these hard times. Stay safe and stay positive. We are all in this together.